Oh, Greetings, all of you. This is very exciting. And uh, thank you for doing this. <laughs> but, yeah, I've got to start off by saying, me. when I kind of contacted you guys about doing the interview, I only thought there was one album coming out, Alien Stories, but it turns out you <laughs> have released three on the same day. So. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> But that's okay. That's cool. Uh, Alien Stories looks like what we're talking about anyway, because Jesse's here as well. So that's, that's <laughs> great. Um, so anyway, just for folks who may not be familiar with Alien Stories and what the kind of the thing, what it's behind it, one of you can uh, start off by explaining to folks what, what's going on here. Why don't we start with Jesse? Alien yeah. Stories is yeah. Je title. Alien Stories is your song or your tune mm -hmm. uh, title track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesse, um, get it. <laughs> yeah, Alien Stories. No pressure. So, <laughs> yeah, way to pass the buck, Polly. <laughs> hey. Um. So I wrote this piece like uh, in the you know lockdown right after the beginning of lockdown. It was right. kind of like the summer in was still locked down in New York, at least at that point. Um, and it was a reflection on alien stories and on aliens in terms of uh, the virus, but also in terms of uh, how, you know, immigration works and the way that all of that got much more complicated all of a sudden. Right. And as well as um, alien being a question of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, which was very uh, uh, was going on at the time, all the protests were going on. So there is this analogy that a lot of um, writers have used throughout the years, African American writers, to say that there are two planets. Right. Uh, and this was sort of like a collision or something. So alien stories encapsulates all these difficult things and was a, a way to also think through all of that and deal with that because I think this is what Afrofuturism is one word that we call this practice but this is what this is thinking through all of that and dealing with all this situation right. and digesting it and being able to create actual futures and not to see it as the end of the world but gotcha yeah and for, well it kind of feels like it, those yeah. two planets are colliding at this point in time are you, are you paying much attention? I'm sure you are with what's going on, mm -hmm. especially in the States. Uh, how, mm -hmm. how, yeah. And Europe too. Yeah. Europe, yeah. there's a lot happening. I'm in Europe right now. Ah, so, yeah. <laughs> are you in Switzerland? Switzerland, exactly. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> My mind is blown. So how, how, do, <laughs> how did Conrad and Pauline, how did you adapt to what Jesse had written? How did you approach it? <laughs> well, Oh, <laughs> um, we we've worked with Jesse for a few years now, so mm -hmm. we know his music to some extent, and right. and we played a lot of it, and worked with Jesse quite a bit. We played with Jesse also um, in a group called String Noise Sounds, and so it was that was very smooth um, kind of transition or whatever you want to call it right. into working working with him um so th that was that was not a problem i mean uh the uh the instruments are prepared to some extent we, we use rubber bands and uh -huh. bells and 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 um and so that that was fun and so we were used to that kind of stuff too and it was really fun to put together right so what kind of conversation and do you and pauline have when you're putting something like this together <laughs> oh are we allowed i mean um kind of the usual i mean experiment with with different sounds and uh, different bell techniques and rubber band techniques and um other you know bits right. like well, that jesse always has a way of pushing even further right um than the last uh, whatever experience we might have had um, with another piece that he had written, or I think this marks the third string noise piece. Is it? Sounds right. right. And yeah. we also have he also has a piece um, 
for cyborg drums and violin. Right. <laughs> so um, we've we've explored a lot of territory, and and yet he still comes up with something something new. And so um, a lot of our conversations will between Conrad and I when we first get a new score will. We'll start off as, as okay. So, what part are you playing? Unless it tells us exactly which part we're playing, so right. we'll we'll um, sort of draw straws on that, you know. Unless gotcha, there's yeah. something that really stands out and says, "Oh, this I want to do this part," or "This looks like something." Mm -hmm. I see. And so, Jesse, w were you kind of consulted as the track was being recorded, or did you just hear it after it was finished and react to it then? So actually, they performed it first before they recorded the, the record. Right. Um, so this one was interesting because I think it was, yeah, it was the first collaboration I did with them over the internet. Actually, it was the first real collaboration I ever did just over the internet, like without actually meeting, you know, them and che checking the sounds or testing out what we're doing. So I... Um, yeah, I said, I remember I had a guitar laying around. <laughs> I just used the guitar and tried uh, the technique of adding a bell, attaching a bell to the string on the guitar. Yeah, so he, he, he actually, you put it under your chin and everything, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> so when so, we yeah. talk about the bells, we're talking about these little bells. Oops. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Very cool. Little things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just sent it to them and then... I think they sent me a video back saying it works and showed me mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this was that. yeah, this was uh, really in the middle of the pandemic, like mm -hmm. August. Was it August? Mm -hmm. August. It when did we perform July, these? July. Performed in August. Yeah. It was August. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it was it was really in the in the thick of things here, mm -hmm. and so everything was mm -hmm. was online. So the other albums that we recorded were done previously but this one was this was all prepared written recorded right. um, how do you think that the recording situation affected the music did, it have, did you approach your what you were doing differently huh well not really i mean i don't know if we would have how much we would have done it differently we would have met with composers right um but I'm I'm happy with the way it might it well it would have turned out differently but I don't know how. Um, but mm -hmm. that being said, we're really pleased. We were like more than happy with the way it came out when we got the tracks sure. back and listened to them. We were like, wow, that that really that really worked. I mean, we had a great recording engineer, Kevin Ramsey, and then um, and then it was mastered really well with um elliot sharp and i don't know we were just really more than pleased with the way it came out all right so so, so how did you choose um the various uh, composers of the five tracks on this record did were you familiar with everybody ahead of time or did you do a little research or how, how mm -hmm, pretty much so um all of the composers on the albums are also performers and improvisers right and so um we have um, encountered um, one another in various circles and other projects over the years. And um, this really came about um, as a result of a small chamber of music, new music series here in New York called Carnegie Hill Concerts, where I'm a co-curator with um, huh? Nicola Zork. And we were not able to have a spring season. And so somehow in, in just the angst of missing that um, time of like presenting new music, um, we came up with this idea of a, a mid-afternoon music festival. Uh -huh. And um, why don't we commission five composers and do a dream project where we pair composers with singer songwriters. Nicholas is also a singer songwriter and we created um, a platform to really um, highlight and spotlight uh, the, the community of, of incredible uh, black composers and musicians that were in 
right, in right. our circle. And so we reached out to our immediate, basically friends who um, and collaborators and asked if they'd be into this concept. And, <laughs> and we had five composers that wrote new duos and it was incredible because it was really what a, a, a month did you have like a month to write it, it, it was, yeah we didn't give them a whole lot of time it wasn't, right no, right because it, it really it was, was like, like it was a spontaneous bam. It was sort like... of like let's can we do you think we can make this happen kind right, of thing right. and it really <laughs> delivered i mean it was incredible and so after after that fact shortly after that another colleague of ours um the um, owner of uh, Infrequent Seams, James Ilgenfritz, who's also a composer and bassist and improviser and really a uh, close collab collaborator of String Noise, reached out and, and said, hey, you know, I think, um, like, what do you think about releasing this on Infrequent Seams? And um, we, we just thought it was a great yeah. idea. And so um, it, it pretty much just happened it's like one of the quickest turnaround we we've had on a project. I think. <laughs> so it sounds like yeah. it's quite a thriving experimental scene in in Brooklyn and New York City in general. Is that? The yeah, I really miss that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you yeah. think do you, are things starting to move back to normal or whatever that is? Do you think? Uh, not quite normal, yeah. but things are starting to happen Slowly here open. here and there some outdoor things and some right. reduced uh audience stuff and and some future possibilities um so you know it's um a lot of people didn't think it would last this long but no. uh, a lot of a lot of people are adapting a lot of uh my my summer my last summer was all canceled right but but it's it's now happening this summer and i think it actually everything will because they're they've been preparing mm -hmm. and and realizing they can only do maybe 25 percent audience and they've been preparing how they can do that physically and financially and and kind of make that work so everyone's adapting right and also right. i think there's a new kind of concept of the hybrid concert you know where part of it is in person and part of it is still streamed and we're doing one of these at carnegie hill in may right uh where the singer songwriter ayana witter johnson is going to be streaming in from um from london yeah and there will be pre-recorded material but then they're also going to be um live musicians yeah. and we were talking about having some attendance, but I think we're going to pass on the attend uh, live right. audience, but we're going to probably do that again for the June concert as well. Um, and actually Jesse did something really incredible with his opera. Um, oh. it, did you call it an opera where um, everybody basically connected through jam Kazam and. <laughs> oh, right. Um, yeah. That was cool. Was performed live. Over <laughs> right. The, right. Like, over an hour performance it was incredible that was uh, amazing yeah and um <laughs> so and some of it was pre-recorded and some of it was a lot most of it was live but right, it was like right. a hybrid yeah. sort of so, um, so as musicians how is it different when you're performing uh, inter interacting with people digitally rather than in person way different <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah. just you you have to um, adjust your expectations and also kind of rethink it and and try to make something creative out of what's different about it um, because you can't replicate in person performing um, so you you adjust and you you figure out oh what what would be cool to do this way and right, I think right. that's what Jess, Jesse did really yeah. successfully in his opera so yeah um, tell us about jesse <laughs> yeah, well, for the record yeah. release we did um we did a live um well we attempted a live uh, performance of the brahms <laughs> arrangement with greg saunier right and i don't know somehow like it for that particular thing it was super fun right yeah and, for an, um, that's an as an example we we, <laughs> we knew it wouldn't be together but it it was a piece that didn't really it would 
it, it's interesting in its untogetherness. So um, <laughs> we we just we just right. kind of went for it and 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 also, it was fun. That goes for Jesse's piece as well. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a bit about? Yeah. That? Yeah, yeah. So the opera was uh, all telematic, and everyone was basically at home. So each each player was uh, playing from their house. Right. Um, it, was, it was. I don't remember if it was seven or eight people. Right. And uh, I just ran everything on my computer together, sound and video, and streamed it on Twitch. Um, and I also performed actually. So it was kind of. Yeah, kind of mad because you know each one would have different latencies to each other person. There were actually, I think, three continents. Um, <laughs> there was Switzerland, uh, New York, uh, upstate, and Brooklyn, I think, or maybe right. two upstate, and then uh, China. Vermont. So in China, yeah, in China. <laughs> so we had different kinds of latencies over the course of the piece, and so the piece had to be able to function with various ways of relating to each other right in time yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> sounds wild but i mean to think if you think just 10 years ago that we were doing this and you guys were doing this you would say no way and i'm old enough to remember i just read that new zealand and australia was having like a moment with just this um amazing like Hey, we can hug and, and yes, like they, they just opened the borders. Uh, our mm -hmm. bubble has been extended as of yes. yesterday. That's what. So. That's great. Well, New, so, New exactly. Zealand's been been doing great, haven't they? Pretty much so. The only, we're a little slow on the vaccinations, but they're, they're getting there. But as far mm -hmm. as the actual uh, keeping everybody safe, and mm -hmm. I think we've had a total of maybe twenty two deaths from COVID mm -hmm. over the oh whole gosh. thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if one if, if we get one uh, case out in the community, everything shuts down again. So mm -hmm. it's a good, yeah. uh, but it's easier with, you know, five million people in, a, in an island. It's, 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 yeah, <laughs> we, we made a trip out there a few years ago and absolutely loved it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, we spent 10 days in New Zealand just driving. Did you, did you um, perform at all or just? Drive. No, we um, <laughs> we were in in Australia, so we decided to stay on a you know ten extra days and from right. Auckland, and then just drove down south to Christchurch. It was cool, fantastic. Cool. Mm -hmm. So Jesse, are you permanently ensconced in Switzerland, or are you back and forth to New York? Or um, I, I I should get back to New York at some point <laughs> yes. in the fall. Um, <laughs> let's see. I might go to Australia soon, but I'm right. not sure yet if that's right. happening. Mm -hmm. Because everything's kind of crazy with Australia, yeah. Um, but yeah, New York, and then we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Miss so, you guys too. I was hoping to touch on a couple more tracks. Uh, the, mm -hmm. number, the number one or the number two one is done with a guy named uh, Lester uh, Saint Louis. Saint Louis. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, which, who I understand is kind of part of the Brooklyn scene. He kind of runs a venue as well, and he's a, a cellist and a composer. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about that one as well. called archive zero one right absolute recoil and it's a score that is i would describe it as a text score uh conceptualizing directions um and utilizing these um i wish he was here to he would explain it so much better, more, you know, better <laughs> but Mm -hmm. um, allowing allowing the performative um, uh, experience of the perf uh, of the musicians to direct the way the piece develops and right. how um, so, but it's pretty specific. Like when we were rehearsing with him, he could he got we could tell when he was getting excited when it was working. Right. 
when it was <laughs> happening, like what, yeah. what he had written. And, um, and he, it's something that he is doing a lot with um, various um, sizes and uh, fluc uh, uh, fluctuations of ensembles. And we're actually presenting his works this coming Tuesday at Carnegie Hill Concerts. Oh, that's exciting. He has a, um, an ensemble of five musicians. Right. And that will be... Uh, will there be an audience? <laughs> performed live, but streamed. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. And it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Yeah. You yeah. Should check it out. Okay, we'll do. Uh and so I'm interested in your um your collaboration with Greg Sonier from uh, Deerhoof as well. And you've done the whole other album, uh, Lunch Between Order and Chaos with him. So how how do you guys fit together with what you do and what he does? Oh, how did that start? I'm not really sure how that started. <laughs> how did that start, Pauline? Well, I think um, we were might have been introduced to Greg through Don Vandavala in. Oh Vancouver. yeah, they're friends from Mills College, and so I think we might have connected in that way initially. But mm -hmm. we've been fans of Deerhoof, and um, they've been based in Brooklyn for a long time. Right. So once we met Greg, I mean, he's just he's kind of amazing like he's just sort of omnipresent in so many different projects and um, in so many different ways musically um, also a composer um, he we just became really good friends and talked a lot about music and um, I think we might have asked him to help us record uh, some covers oh we actually you know what on our first album the book of strange positions we covered Deerhoof song. A Deerhoof song, that's right. Ah, okay. And then we do, and, we do parties, right? Is that the one? Oh, yeah, it, that's the one. one too? That's like... the first one, I yeah, think. We've done one. another one too. And then, oh, and then it's Panda, Panda, Panda. But anyway, and then he he recorded us in, um, and was is really into close miking and mm -hmm. and a lot of he's very into the tactile, into the very hearing every bow noise and right. <laughs> string, string noise if you will and and so he had us record all these uh, the whole album uh, in a small closet <laughs> so, how small was it <laughs> um like really small it was narrow it was pretty narrow and you then he set up little <laughs> little mics little mics up not high tech mics and right. and so we played these pieces very close to the mic and close to each other right and there and, were no mic stands they were sort of like tucked in clothing you know in right, various, right. there were a lot of shelving so he just had them placed in random places and he would move it around and he you know he would open the door and then the door would shut and he would go out and that was his you know booth and we were in there and at one point for one of the songs for the deer have cover panda 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 he mm -hmm. jumped in the closet with us with the cowbell <laughs> recorded all three of us <laughs> in the closet more cowbell that was that was yeah more, more cowbell. cowbells <laughs> no that I was, know it was a cowbell. that was on that was for the album the the seven inch covers. um mm -hmm. covers right but yeah. for the uh lunch between order and chaos we went back to the closets but no cowbells right no, no, Just, no, not in that. No. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you because I've seen you've been described as a classical avant punk duo, and I was going to I was going to say what, what does that mean? But now I understand what that means. <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I you think, understand because I've never figured. It I, out. I never. If somebody somebody coined Someone, that. Um, in an interview, and, and we just went off. with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. it wasn't our idea. All right. So, have you with three albums just released? What are you going to do next? Oh, <laughs> uh, we yeah. so much. There's there's a lot. Well, we we uh, are celebrating the ten year, which is actually in August. Um, right. But so um, we're excited 
we're excited to have had uh, the lunch album come out and then the uh, Giga album also with the collaboration with the International Contemporary Ensemble and sort of like all of the three culminating really kind of makes us feel like, I don't know, we we can go on to the next chapter. And right. so there's, there's a lot of really good stuff that we're working on. Um, and I mean, we have, we have this new George Lewis piece that we need to, right. to get down. We have um, this uh, work by Bernard Long, who is an Austrian composer that he wrote for us a few years back, which is crazy. Right. Uh, it's, it's a beast of a piece, all important, <laughs> you know, uh, so it's taken years to, to do. And, um, and I don't know, we've, we've got string noise sounds to think about. We've yep, got, yep. um, cool. Yeah. A lot Very of good. Things. So we'll keep yeah. you posted. Thank yes. you so much for reaching Thank out. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for reaching out. Jesse, if you're coming to Australia, swing by New Zealand when you get a chance. I guess I should. Yeah. Yeah, you should if you've never been there. It's an amazing place. It's an amazing yep, yep, place. Yep. Yeah. Well, guys, okay. have a have a great day. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, Marty. Bye-bye. Okay. See you, Jesse. Bye-bye.